uh, trying to put some stuff in the book for you. Um, many of these items are going to take a mention and then we can move on. One of them that's going to take more than a mention is the first item. Uh, Parks and Recreation Committee uh, uh, has asked we have Robert Keller come in and talk a little bit about uh, some ideas that have been discussed uh, on Door Sweetington Park. And then also put the playground equipment on there as a uh, uh, something that if, if y'all want to continue that, it's in it's in your package, all the quotes. And Robert, just to let you know, I uh, shared with council everything that you gave us the other day. Okay. All right. Okay. Come on up here. And I brought some more pictures, more fun stuff to share. You're on the cover. You can. Yeah. This is just an overhead picture here, guys, that you've seen before in the garbage. And, of course, the topo map from underneath here. Lonnie, I've got one for you as well, if you want to see one. Topos, man. Somebody knows those topos. Oops. Got two of them now. Ann and John had asked if I would uh, take a look at the, the Dallas Wilkinson Park. Uh, in, in my background, you know, from, from a conservation standpoint, this is what I do. Uh, and they said, what can, how can you help us? What do you think of this? Uh, I remember the background on this. I remember it being called a pejorative name, that there was something about this that was something less than honorable, it was dangerous or something. And, and so, of course, I, I did what I usually do. I talked to Dan for a while and talked to Bill Landrum. And, of course, as it turns out, looks to me like there's nothing bad about the park. That it's, and per Dan, it was that the park needed a little bit of attention in regards to saying we are here. So one of the things that I've suggested to uh, Ann and John, and then of course to Jim as well, is that we've got um, a birding sanctuary park very similar to this down at Dolphin Island, Alabama. When the birds come across from uh, from South America that come across the Gulf of Mexico and the first piece of land that they hit is this little strip of land and they've got about 150 acre bird sanctuary there and one of the things that I would like to that I, I'm making a suggestion that you guys think about having this as a passive birding park one of the things they do down at Dolphin Island is is that they close the park at dusk and then they open it back up in, in the morning I think that that perception of this park being unsafe or something like that could be taken care of in, in two very simple maneuvers. One would be having a <coughs> gate put here and a gate put here. The one, the ones I'm pointing to, guys, are the the entrance there off of what is that number ridge, and then this is this is Hood Road or whatever this is. And uh, one of the things. That, that we've done there at, uh, at the Atlantic Coast Conservancy. We get an X amount of dollars every year that we've been directing towards the community. We've not really directed any towards the city yet. And one of the things I told the folks is that I would be more than happy to provide these two gates. Gates cost about $2,500. But I think having a gate on this property, and it doesn't mean the park's closed at dusk, it just means you can't drive in there. And if I were a kid, I'd be in there and I'd probably be smoking something and, and hanging out because that's what kids do and I'm sure that I did it when I was there too. I think that if you keep the people from being in there at night with vehicles, I think that that would give more of a safety uh, appearance, uh, opening up in the morning to people to come in there. One of the things that I noticed about the property, the trails are really in good shape. You've got a lot of heterogeneity in there in regards to habitat. You've got a mature oak hickory forest, but in several places you've got open areas. One of the things you like to see in a birding preserve is different types of habitat because different animals, different organisms will use this different habitat. You've got everything in place to do this. Birding parks are usually very passive in nature. You have some interpretive signage uh, that says, this is what you might expect, or it says something about ecosystem restoration, where this could be a burn habitat, or it could be an open area where you put butterfly bush in there. But I think very, very easily you could give this that appearance of, of we are maintaining this with a gate, with some interpretive signage. 
Uh, and, and Your Honor, you and I talked about this a long time ago in regards to what we talked about, the marble trail, and what we wanted to do, that trail along the railroad track. And of course, that railroad track does go through there. One of the things that I thought, and this goes back to something I saw on the Masters Golf Tournament where they said something about that the reason the sand in the sand traps is so white, it's not sand, it's ground up marble. And I thought what we could do is use the marble aggregate or the, 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 the offal of the, uh, the marble to use that as our sand and potentially uh, put a surface in there. This area down here, you can see on the top of that, that it's a little bit steeper there. Uh, you will fall down there, but other than that, it looks like the property is, is quite even. And the, the trails are wide uh, with just a little bit of maintenance there. I think that you can make it a very walkable park. When we were down there, there was a woman with her two kids, and I said, what do you think about the park? And she said, this is great. I can have my kids untethered, turn them loose, and they can, they can go out there and they can run and they can have fun. And I said, well, what do you think? would add to your experience. And she said a playground. And I do think that, and this is one of the things we've seen too, that playgrounds, themed playgrounds, for the age 5 to 12 really go over well in something like this. And having a theme of, of birdhouses, and, and, and what I envision would be something along the lines of like small tree houses that look like a birdhouse that the kids could go via suspension bridge from one to the other. But they also have um, themed playgrounds, and I know that the, is it the, the optimist or someone is doing the music Rotary. theme. Rotary. Rotary is doing the music theme, and they do natural resources themes where it would be almost like a, a concrete cast of a, of a bird or something that goes along with the playground. I think that the taxpayers have paid enough, I think that we should be able to go to the community for very well defined asks and say, we have two gates we want to put in. That's $5,000. So let's go and ask for $5,000. We've got habitat where we need $2,500 for um, for, bird, for uh, uh, butterfly bush or something like that. Or we've got a playground here that would be $75,000. I think that we should be able to not only go to the community for a very specific ask, but to go to Home Depot, to go to some of the local entities. They're, they're screaming for opportunities, but they really like it as opposed to a nebulous, we need half a million dollars to do this park. I think they'd be much more happy to say, I like that piece. And you do it in a stepwise fashion. This time we do the gates, next time we do the butterfly bushes, the next time we do the playground. <clears throat> And that's in, in, in my organization, and we get probably about $150,000 a year that we're directing towards <coughs> paying uniforms and whatever. But this is right in my wheelhouse. And especially, and, and John, one of the things we've always talked about is what is it that's so special about Jasper? And I think everybody's in agreement. It's pretty up here. We've got habitat. We don't have a, you know, we're not like Chattanooga. We don't have a waterfront. But it's pretty up here. I think we should put our ecological foot forward in regards to passive birding parks or something of that ilk where there's not a lot of maintenance there. They can't tear it up and birding is trending. Uh, I think that down at Dolphin Island they have such an influx of people when the birds come across there and one of the cool things about that, we're protecting habitat down there and the Mobile Bay Basin starts here in Pickens County and runs all the way down through Alabama to Mobile Bay. That would give us a theme where we could say we're protecting it on both ends. And that gives me all the buy-in that I need, and we can direct funds towards this. So, that, uh, will that come as a recommendation from the uh, Parks and Recreation Committee? Yes. We will have that on the agenda, and uh, uh, I think I don't know that a presentation. Would be necessary. I'll be more than happy to. I think but, it's always uh, nice to have pretty mm -hmm. pictures of whatever it is with the, right. with the themes and with some of the interpretive signage that, that we feel like would be appropriate out there. Well, uh, is that Park 65 or something? Is that right? Is it it's closer to 80. It's huge and, it, and it's well camped. There was not a lot of trash out there. I, they do have, you know, it would be kind of nice if you had, uh, and this was a suggestion I made that too. 
John as well. On the Appalachian Trail, they have moldering privies uh, to where it's an outhouse, but you throw wood chips in there. Not that that would be your primary facility, but it would be nice if you could have something like that to demonstrate, you know, and say, this is what we're protecting water quality, and this is the way we do it. We actually have sewer on the property, so it would be easier, deeper in, into it. It actually comes from Arbor Hill across the property. So we could actually sewer the mm -hmm. bottom end. We could have actually septic, which we talked about years ago, but we never did. Um, Who's is that place right there? That is the... Um, it's Hope House. Oh, it's Hope House. Okay. We, we weren't sure we it saw was, that the parcel was included. It was, it, was, it was an effort to assist the orphanage, orphan children or children needing assistance 20 years ago. Okay. So that building was actually in the outline of the park, is that? That building? Yes, it was. Uh, at that particular time, yeah. it was a much more given time, I guess, and then we were approached to accommodate the Hope House at that time. And, uh, really, that, and that, that changed because regulations, some laws changed about how state uh, city funds could be spent, if I remember correctly. We even had to... We, we didn't, we, we, this this was mainly a private sector together. investment. We, did, we just provided the land from it. It's still city property. As long as it's the, used as the Hope House, it will be city property. Once it ceases to be the Hope House, it would become city property. We did not give it. We just used really it. And if you look at this, you look at the points of access here, and I don't know that unauthorized access is a problem per se. I'm sure some people probably do. We, we've had issues with people driving through there, but mainly during snow events and whatever. But more often than not, they, people are here to no vehicles. I've chased a couple through there over the years. But there's, there's, you know, I think with two gates, you would probably control a lot. The only yeah, other yeah, one is like, a, yeah, you've got an access down here. But I think you could actually do that with stones, you know, get some large stones because there is a, a ditch here and a ditch here. And if you were to cover up the access point, uh, I think that that would deter them from getting in there if indeed uh, unauthorized access was a problem. The park, and you touched on it a little with a lady that you met there, was not built to be a a Jasper City Park or a Lady Park. It was built exactly what it is. We we spent eighty a hundred thousand dollars of federal money to open the roads. There was no money for outbuildings, which we talked about a few years ago. We we're going to build restrooms, and we spent the money in other directions at that time. But it's exactly. Well, except for where we did some work uh, to get dirt recently, I think yes. it needs to be corrected there. But everything else is, is three point something miles of road. Mm -hmm. That the danger of it is that it's excluded. Uh, it's exclu uh, it's wilderness, and and it's something that I thought was the neat part about it that in say Jasper, Georgia, that we had 80 acres that you could actually go and get away mm -hmm. from everybody you want to get away from. And uh, it's turned out to be a dirty word. Uh, people worried about danger. Yeah, if you're out by yourself, you can walk down Navajo Trail by yourself and get 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 something happen to you. So you don't need to go there by yourself. Lisa, I've gotten on to her for going out there by herself, walking through that park. Because if you if if you it's, I think it would be recognized as that because it would be a great place for a pervert, someone who wanted to do harm to someone else, to hide out and wait for some victim to walk through. And probably get away with it. I think we had a murder up toward Alamo Falls, but you have a lot of parks like that, and that's why they're called nature parks. Right. You got a, you got a bad situation. And very seldom did they actually take advantage of nature parks like you. You would think that people would hang up there, but they're very seldom. You can go to Unicoi, and you can leave right out of the Unicoi Lodge and get right on a trail and walk all kind of mountain trails. And we have this right here in Jasper. That's why I didn't really want the playgrounds and whatever else that would attract people that would just want to swing on a swing set, which we got swing sets. Sure. That was something really unique, which we were going to try to go toward, but it's all about, and I knew it would evolve into something yeah. different, but that's what we anticipated, that's what we applied for the grant for, for nature trails. What was that privy you were talking about? It's, it's called a moldering privy. It's basically an outhouse on now the plane that you, that you can move from one section to the next when it gets full, and you throw wood chips in there, and they, they actually are ADA compliant, and everywhere on the Appalachian Trail, even the most remote areas, they have ADA compliant moldering privies. 
And I think the story to be told there is that it's a good teaching experience. I don't know that, you know, up there they want you, if you're going to urinate, they want you to go out in the woods, but if you're going to defecate, they want you to use those facilities. That would just be more or less a demonstration. It's been a report about it we use, but I, I think we have capabilities of having real bathrooms there. But, uh, but there would be a situation where we actually have hours at Lee Newton Park and at the city park vandalized from time to time, and, and you can't stop that. You just got to correct it when it happens, or you might put a camera up to catch someone, but there's somebody waiting to do it again. But these would be like Tiffany and Outhouse. You have very little money invested in it, and, and, and you know, I, but once again, to, to go back to you, I think having that natural park, that's what we ought to take advantage of. Let's more or less shake the pom-poms that we do have these natural parks because I think more and more we do see that people want to take a walk in the woods or where they can get away from it. And that woman, and, and I know sometimes we we fall prey to, oh, let's do a frisbee golf place and let's do this and let's do that. Just this area right here is so flat that you could put a small playground you know, just oh, and, and, I, I, we, we were going to do one and just never got to that position because it was so excluded. Uh, and uh, but when you start putting playgrounds, it actually might get used. But uh, the deal is, it's, it's something special. A few years ago, we were going to have those warrior dashes and things like this mm -hmm. here. And actually, there's parking close by that it could be a great attraction for uh, events. And uh, I think let's uh, let's turn it into a burning preserve and let's see if we can get the people to come up here because they have been flocking. Keep it as natural as possible. Keep it as natural mm -hmm. as possible. In the the first time we've ever agreed on anything like that. No, we agree on everything. <laughs> uh, and not only that, your area where you move the soil, I think all you do is just move that out and plant it with uh, with some type of uh, early successional grass or something, and let's have that. It's almost like a food project. And, but it's also you can actually have, have a little play area or picnic area there as well. Yeah. So, of course, somebody can stop off and eat and go on. That's right. And, the, and those springboard into photography classes, into bird watching. And it's got a lot of potential. Yes, the bike trails, aren't they, aren't they touting that with some birding as well, the ones up north uh, that have just opened? It wouldn't surprise me. The, the, this bunch is, is unusual. They want it peaceful. They want it right. quiet. You know, and, 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 and when I go out and hike on the Appalachian Trail, I hate it when people are out there with horses. So everybody gets kind of persnickety. And Dan says that this is not the best biking trail you've ever, he's ever been on. It's actually too hilly. And, and one of the things, and I'm not sure whether John or Ann mentioned it, but you can have compatible usage, like with those trails, and that's a pretty hilly place, but having almost like from, from Piedmont to sponsor like a, a heart healthy trail, where they have little workout stations, you know, where here you do push-ups. But all of those can be covered with interpretive signage and, and more or less made indestructibles to where, you know, they're not going to be, you know, if you get out there with a two by four beat on those things, pretty much they're going to be able to. And, and, and I think that you should make them that way. Let's, let's make them that thinking that people so, don't beat on them. You know, so. And there was, garbage cans were never put in there because if you bring it in, take it out. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd be maintaining garbage trails. So we had talked about putting like little doggy bag things at the head of the trail. So if you got your dog in there, you just take the little baggy trail and you just pick it up. But you said you towed it out. Yeah. Because we don't want it to have plastic and stuff yeah. everywhere. And I do wonder if you were to give it that semblance of we're monitoring this, if we open at daylight and we close at dusk with a sign on them that says this, you know, this, this park. I, I just wonder if maybe it would be used more, John. Well, we never did, after we, after we dedicated it, we never promoted it. We expected people to know that the sign was there and, and stop and use it. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't uh, tell everybody how great it was, but it's, it's, it's nice to walk for an hour and a half out there and never see anybody. Uh, and it, it, people do it. Well, and, 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 and I'm also opening the farmer's market out at Potts Mountain. You know, we conserved that 1,300 acres, and we are going to open the trail from the farmer's market to the old Potts Family Cemetery, which is a, a nice little walk, too. And we're going to keep that passive as well. So this might give us an opportunity for some type of a come walk the birding trails of Pickens County or something of that ilk. Uh, this 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 is what I enjoyed. During during the beginning of this process, 
uh, discussion was to, and still is, and the city actually owns property for a staging area on the other side, Arbor Hill side, that you could uh, make the trail all the way to town, and we ran into one or two property mm -hmm. owners that were not accommodating as far as right away. Pretty much killed the idea we probably have the power of condemnation, we just didn't choose to exercise it. Uh, also from here you could go to Talking Rock yeah. through Twin Mountain Lake, and if you could stay close to the elevations of that railroad, it would be one great trail. Well, you remember I came in here with that from Talking Rock to Tate mm -hmm. back in 2013. We've talked to the railway, and from what I understand, the railway is being used more and more now, that there's more commercial traffic on it. Um, and for some reason, they think that people oh, are going to get run so. over. I don't agree with it. I think a, a rails to trails there from Talking Rock to Tate would be an ideal use. We, we, were, we were going to stay off the railroad right away. Yeah, obviously, they didn't want us on the right of way, but uh, right next to it, and try to build the low line areas up to as close to as possible the railroad. And if it had not been for one property on one uh, at the time, Lonnie had pretty much every easement, and I just didn't want to pull the trigger on condemning somebody's property to get in their backyard. I was wanting them to come along, but it never happened. Well, thank you for allowing me to present this. Thank you, you. Thank and you for your come help. Back. You know, we, uh, we will. Uh, yes, sir. We, we will discuss this Monday at 6. Okay. Appreciate Sounds it. Sounds good. I'll be here. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Robert. Oh, I found my glass case, by the way. Oh, oh. Right where I left it. Where was it? Right where I left it. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> Under my chair. All right. Also, including in the back each chair, uh, our uh, quotes. Yeah. We received on the playground equipment uh, for your information. I, I don't see any action on that right now. Uh, but uh, give us some ideas for budget. Give you ideas for the budget. Now this is for that property, no? This for it's for anything. Oh, okay. So no, we're we're looking for something like this. Long past the You know, we had a guy here in town that built great trails like this. And accidentally shot himself. He didn't want to the mountainside. And we could talk one time. Uh, John and I had talked about it, even trying to figure out a place to put a dog farm. You know, because there's lots of people that want to. Oh, I hear it every week. Well, dogs are balls now. Yeah, ball and there were discussion that I think we discussed it mm -hmm. to block out a little section here at the rubber company sign and acreage that you can have a dog park. But there's no signs out there that says no animals or dogs. You, the entire thing is a human dog or whatever park possible. Mm -hmm. You can even ride a bicycle out there as long as you don't run over Aunt May. So, uh, and I, I don't think we want to prohibit dogs. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's just, dog it's just a great place in nature. Just where you let them run loose? Is that what, is that what the theory no, is? No, you got to want to keep them all well, out, out there is until it gets more busy, uh, but it still wouldn't be a good idea to keep your dog on a leash. But you, you're talking about an area where you just turn one loose instead of using the ball fields. Mm -hmm. And we've actually had to ask people to get off the ball fields before. Had to run them off. Hmm? Yeah, he's got that. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, too, what we had talked about is trying to stay away from all like the wood type signs. Because in three years you'll be replaced and get something that's going to be durable. So it might cost a little bit more, but a long run will be cheaper. How many miles is it trying to see? A little bit of three. Well, they use them in the national parks and they last for 20 or 30 years. There's a guy here that makes those wooden signs too. I can't remember his name now, but um, they last a long time. Out of Richard, uh, Richard Howard does it. Mm -hmm. And it's probably who it is, Sam Blaston. And then like do the workout stations. Johnny and them did the workout stations over there, and Aaron was not exactly what you call thin. And one reason he got in shape it was that he come up here to the city park and hit them stations every day. Chin ups, pull ups, set ups, ever what the workout was, he did it. That, that was done by a kid in the Boy Scout. He's the reason they're no. not really, they're just a black hole. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right, next thing I got in the package is a quote from Eagle Advantage Solutions. Uh, Tanya has uh, let me know about a need uh, to uh, replace the fingerprint scanner in the police department. Uh, they're doing a uh, lot of, um, well, I guess we're doing all of the Board of Education uh, uh, employees. Maybe mm -hmm. hospital. She didn't mention it, but anyway, uh, fifteen hundred forty-eight dollars that would come out of technology fee. Um, this is uh, uh, certainly a legitimate expense for the technology fee. So I will ask for that uh, at Monday night's meeting. Can we charge for that one? That's how people do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, I want to say fifty. Is that right? I think that's yeah. So I will have that on the agenda for the uh, council. Uh, next one is a request again from Tanya about a $50 failure to uh, uh, attend fee on um, no shows at uh, the city court, getting to be more and more of a problem. She's telling me some of them charge up to $100, and uh, I, don't, I think we want to make this a deterrent, not a, uh, uh, not, I'm not trying to cripple somebody, uh, but a $50 fee I think is reasonable, and uh, I'll ask for a council vote uh, on that. Would the judge not have the power to charge whatever he chose uh, through his judge's responsibilities? Don't know, John. I'll ask it. Well, I'll ask James. Right. But uh, it's kind of. See what the maximum state thing is, too. So you, 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 you a thousand dollars that'll cut you off in the city court. But, uh, but I, anyway, it'd be, it'd be something that the council would approve, but it'd be fine. But I think the city judge has authority to fine up to a certain amount. So I would. Not failure to report would be one of them. Yeah. But the, the, that would be something that might, she might want in our ordinance. Yeah. Um, I don't have any uh, written request, but I have a telephone request from uh, PICA to use Roper property uh, on August 2nd for the Corn Bread reunion. Uh, this, uh, same thing they did last year. I will uh, ask for a vote on that uh, Monday night. Have a written request uh, in your package from the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, <clears throat> bike ride across Georgia is going to be here on Monday, June 4th. Uh, spending the evening here, leaving early the next morning. Uh, the uh, Chamber would like to be able to uh, have a wine uh, tasting, uh, allow wine on, on Main Street on not just the 4th, but also the Saturday, June 2nd. Uh, they will be getting permits, uh, all the catering permits and such for this. Uh, that's one of the days that are already on the schedule. And that's one of the, the Saturdays that we've already discussed and approved. Uh, for their what was it, wonderful Saturday, or they, they had a very good name for it. Any questions on that? We also have some correspondence from Jerry concerning the uh, 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 licensing. It says Saturday Social. Yeah. Saturday Social is that what they call them? At uh, April uh, council meeting, uh, I believe that uh, Ann and John were, uh, they agreed to look at the downtown lighting plan for uh, this year. Um, the county, uh, I understand, <coughs> has approved uh, 
seventy two hundred dollars uh, whatever it was for the tree at the lighthouse I mean at the courthouse lighthouse uh, that has been approved uh, I uh, sent uh, John and a note earlier this month the cost of doing the alley lights on uh, between uh, the old Weeks Jewelry building and uh, Wingology would be $6,250. That would be at 18 feet, which <coughs> Mr. Georgia, Mar uh, Georgia Power, that's tall enough we wouldn't have to pull it down all the time. Yeah, 16 feet is basically the clearance on the road, but I always like to have a little bit more because, you know, Trucks are known about throwing stuff in the back and have a little overhang. So that extra two foot <coughs> definitely makes it. And you got to remember the 18 feet is at the sag of the wire. It's not at the where you connect. The sag of the wire is the dangerous part. Gotcha. John, I know you uh, talked to uh, the representative from the lighting company and uh, Jack Dunn after. Uh, meeting and showed some interest in doing two trees on uh, Main Street. That would be approximately twenty-five hundred dollars each. The the large trees. Yeah. So, uh, if council approved twelve thousand five hundred dollars for the project, we could, we would uh, be able to do the alley and uh, and two trees on Main Street. <coughs> If you, if you check on the budget to make sure that... Talk to Lisa about using the unrestricted uh, hotel motel tax. And, uh, that we don't use for New Year's Eve. There's nothing. We didn't, we didn't commit it in the budget. We committed it to be transferred over to the general fund if needed. Okay. Nothing is signed. No. <coughs> so on the, uh, on the alleyway, is that just one strand or is it just uh, no, is that uh, a photo in here? I think a photo from probably from a prior meeting. <coughs> but it, uh, I'm going to say there's probably eight runs from side building to building. So it uh, lit the area pretty well. And do we have? The owners of those buildings, have they signed off on that? Uh, we will, they we will get, they will, they will need to. We will need to get the bills. Who bought those buildings? I don't know the name. Yeah, they bought the buildings still. Sure. Uh, it's not a local. Uh, have you heard? Well, I, the I, Weeks property. Who yeah. bought the Weeks property? I don't know. And the Weeks all of this. I didn't realize that it changed hands again, too. In the last 18 months or two years. Oh, but it's still I, okay. Yeah. It's not the guy that had the restaurant there. He's still working with his rent. The one thing that's right there we're at, there's power source. The city's got a meter right there on the side. So it's one of the better places in town that we can do it. If we can, like you said, get some permission. So that definitely can see us have a, a waiver uh, you know, hold harmless. Because anything, anytime we do something, yeah. to someone's yeah. building, we've got to have the mm -hmm. permission. We just can't hold our way mm -hmm. up here. Stick a ladder uh, side of the building. Does that not need to be done before we spend the money, <coughs> or agree to spend the money? I I think we could make it make it a budget item and then pull it together. Okay. Uh, but it depends on council's. But I'm wishing I support it. I just want to make sure that we. Yeah, we're, and we're not going to get into any liability. <coughs> we get in there, we don't have permission, and we'll find another way to do it. We can go with the poles, or right. or not do the project. This uh, this is a request to move forward. What's going on with the rest of town? Does anybody know? Yeah, Darn out. Oh, did they get the 
Uh, and, and likewise, I don't think the owners of the buildings have been consulted. The last time I talked to Jack about it, they had. He told me he had not talked since his brother in law died that, that right. he was going to slow the process yeah. down a little bit. All right. David? Yeah. Your turn. <clears throat> Council, we've got a uh, possible delay, and I guess it's beyond possible delay in the day. Mm -hmm. It is a delay. Yes. In the approval for increasing the water treatment permit. Mm -hmm. um, I've asked David to talk to us uh, about uh, that request and the effect of a two year delay in getting it approved uh, on our uh, wastewater permit. Yeah, what we're afraid of is, is George EPD has notified us through Turnipsey Engineering that they're looking at maybe two years before we will get a water plant increase, uh, possibly longer, that they're going to see how it goes with the leak detection and possible meter replacement change out program, whatever we decide to do before they're even going to consider an increase in our well permit which is what we have to have to get a water plant uh, permit. It's even harder to get one through surface water. So we're, we're trying to get our groundwater permit increased from 1 million to 1.3 million. And they have jumped in and said, we're going to look at you for two years and see if you're improving. And if you're improving, we'll consider it. If not, then you'll stay where you're at. So my question <coughs> to Jim was, are we sure we want to continue down the same road with the wastewater plant if we're not going to get any more water treatment plant? Then why don't we want to jump in five million dollars deep into a wastewater plant permit increase when they're not going to say one way or another whether they're going to give us a water plant increase? Uh, that's that was my only question that I wanted y'all to know that you know we're sitting in here with a wastewater plant bill to pay and you know we don't have any room for any more customers to come on today the water plant was set on 1.26 1 point 1 million nine hundred twenty six thousand per day and our permits too so we all see which that still was up in the county 150,000 right now I mean that's still on we still have that's our only ace and hole that was getting it off after that, then it's we are what we are. So I just wanted y'all to know, you know, that because I mean, those bills are going to be coming in, and without the city able to, like in the past, the mayor was able to pay a lot of the cost with you know substantial things coming in. It's going to be hard to bring substantial things in when you don't have the water to bring it in. You know, and we. I counted on this over the past couple of years coming in and being done and y'all approved for the engineers to do it and we had really not heard back from them on this until about two weeks ago. Um, hey, it may be two years before they even consider you. So that's, uh, that's a trouble spot. Is there any appeal, is there anything we can do to have to uh, have them uh, reconsider? Yeah, I mean, we can have a set down. I mean, we can invite them up and have a set down. The engineer has uh, suggested against it. They said that uh, William Frechette is who we have talked to. And that he, um, along with A.D. Oki, is the other one's name, um, through surface water have said that until we're below 20 that we'll stay where we are. So I feel like I think I've missed something, but I, I mean, last time we met, which was, I guess, well, two months ago, when Ben came up here and everything seemed like, I mean, we knew there was, was going to take a while, but I don't know that I'm up to speed on our well, that was, rate being higher than what we thought. Or, yeah, that's our wastewater side. Yeah. It's, it's still a go. Okay. It's still a, 
yeah. if we want to put the money into that now yeah. before we get to that. And all that, I'm saying, you know, are we, you know, putting up, is it the credit for the card or whatever? Mm -hmm. uh, because without the increases, then you're going to stick citizens with the bill. Mm -hmm. Was that GFA funded? Was that, how are we going to fund our uh, wastewater? Mm -hmm. So, have we been educated on our increased leakage rate? I, I don't recall. Yeah, we, we approved a uh, leak detection company. Uh, I guess that was at the last meeting. There's no to start in. It would have been March. Or March. But I didn't know, yeah, that, was, I didn't know that was as a, as a consequence of having a higher rate. At the time we approved it, we thought that everything, all the permits were, would be going through. Uh, thankfully, we did approve the leak detection, and that will show uh, evidence that we're, we're making headway yeah. and increase the chances of being successful in getting a permit. So with the paperwork we file as part of our routine <coughs> show that our rates now over 20, is that right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're considerably over that, and hopefully through the leak detection uh, and the guidance through the leak detection, not just the leak detection, but what guide, they'll give us the guidance on the meters and stuff too. And so whether they're junk and get them out of here and get some warning here, uh, they'll give us the guidance. And then if we follow that guidance, uh, we'll be more out to get what we want, hopefully through this group. And that's why I don't think really we need to probably don't really need to meet with them until we've got some kind of a information to give. Starts in May. Hopefully, uh, probably toward the end of May is when uh, they'll get here. It may be have day. Yeah, they haven't given us a hard date on where they finish the people that if they find something where they're at that's, you know, grand enough to stay, then they'll stay and help those people get through that situation a week or so. So they haven't given us a hard date on we'll be here at this date, but hopefully toward the end of May, 1st of June is when they're going to come in. And, uh, is there any update on the possibility of tapping into another source that could potentially provide us with... Well, no, because they, they won't give us the permit to operate the plant any higher either. So no, that's a no also. So really there's no point in doing the back side of it before we do the front side. Well, it, um, it, the, the two go hand in hand and, you know, you, until you really know a date where you're going to be let loose on this side. It's hard to yeah. put that kind of Like I say, I hate to go down and sit in front of it now and say, well, we're, you know, expecting to get this out of the leak detection other than Once we get found. Uh, the lead detection people here and go through all the avenues they have to. Could we reapply? Uh, or we can reapply, we reapply and or something? ask for a face-to-face -face with the mayor and myself and Jim and go down there and hopefully be successful. But at least have a good faith effort. And they can say, look, you're trying to help yourself and you know, maybe we get some of these troubled lines that we know that need a place to put <coughs> them for place. Yes. I want to permit if we went ahead with the wastewater, the permit lasts for what period of time? Here, the water plant or the wastewater? Wastewater. Ten years. So once we have a permit, we, as long as we're planning on doing something within ten years. Yes. And I, if I remember correctly, we approved, uh, our council approved $30,000 uh, of engineering. We did not approve any money to uh, accelerate. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so you're probably looking two years before you're getting started, three. Dan told us that the watershed assessment's been completed, and that would be the main roadblock, mainly just money and iron band would fall. I thought he was talking about us having to get into a group um, every year that they approve a certain amount, chief approves a certain amount, and we weren't going to be able to get in that group this year. That might open the funding? Yeah. Chief of fund. There needs to be also an application for an Appalachian Regional Commission grant, which would do uh, probably 
probably get more three hundred thousand from them, uh, but it's three hundred thousand. So a lot needs to be done to move forward with that. Jim, have you heard anything from Mr. Klein and Georgia Marble? Just uh, even though that we might be able to bring more to the table as far as uh, raw water source. They they will they're not going to take any action now. Don't foresee it uh, in the near future. So Georgia Marble is not as our polypore is not as Polypor anxious to have it. Not uh, anxious to remove on that. Yeah, that was kind of what my question was, I guess. Yeah, I knew we were in trouble when they started the audit stuff and they got more state people involved. I figured that this would come down the table uh, where they would hold your hand to the fire and everything to get numbers down that they would hold up any more increases on us. I mean, the plant's designed to do 3.2 million. I already paid for it, but you can't get it approved to do that. So, I mean, that's one thing I want to let y'all know was is that the funding, or the, as far as any big increases along the line, they're not going to happen anytime soon. And we used to be one of the best people we dealt with down there, built for shit. Said that he was one of the ones holding. So he had no this time until that we would. He used the number 20, but I think personally, if we could get, find some leaks and get it to where it was going the other way, we can possibly do that. But I, mean, I don't know for sure that. That's why I wanted to let y'all know, you know, up front what was going on. And Jim did too. So that's, this is really for information. I don't see us taking any action, uh, but uh, I did want to have it discussed uh, with the council. And well, we've already got them coming in anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah, leak detection is it's going to happen. So David? Is Ben the best source for me to get more information, or are you the best source? Um, I feel like we're making kind of important decisions and I don't necessarily have a whole lot of information <laughs> which you probably figure out by now I like it. I mean, that's, that's up to you. Yeah. You're welcome to come out of the water plenty of time. Okay. Or the Lakes Water Plant. You know, we can sit down and talk about it or me and you and the mayor and Jim can sit down and talk. I mean, it's, you know, that's up to you. I mean, we're It's something that basically, you know, we found out over the past few years that it's been it's been trending up. Yeah. The Camp Ford been trending up, and we knew that it was something we were going to have to approach. You know, when we did approach it with the leak detection this year, that y'all approved in the budget, and we were hoping we would get that done. And you know, in the past, you were able to give them a list of what you were going to do to lower your unaccounted for. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to do leak detection, we're going to do meter replacement, we're going to do this, and they would work with you to get that, you know, maybe even give you a temporary, we didn't even have temporary permits before, for like a year. We went from like 147 to 155, and then that temporary permit, it was to get our unaccounted for down a certain amount, and we would maintain that permit. So, as time goes along, that has changed to where they, apparently they're just not doing that anymore. I just hate to lose the wayside too, just because of that. Well, I don't think we're losing it right now. Yeah. We're, we're going to continue with the, uh, the engineering and, and permit process, but mm -hmm. I don't think we want to. Luckily, we did not uh, spend the extra money to uh, uh, fast track. Fast mm -hmm. track this. Mm -hmm. On the water side? On the supply side? No, that was on wastewater. Yeah, that was to go from uh, 0.8 to 1.6 on the wastewater side was what they were talking about fast tracking. No, I mean there hasn't been any money spent on the water side to get this permit. I think he spent what eight thousand dollars out of that 26 that y'all had approved to get the permit. I can't remember. It that was very minimal amount fall. that's been spent on the water side to get us to this point. But uh, I mean with the leak detection. 
then we'll be able to sit down with them and and they'll know what we've got going on. Is it leak detection? Okay. Is it meters or, or, or what's the problem? Yeah. And we can solve it. Go ahead and jump on to uh, other part of our trip today. Uh, we had a uh, problem on the south end, north end of the county uh, the other day in the Twin Mountain Lake, Old Highway 5 area. And we have a quite a bit of old two-inch line in this area. And we're looking at going in and replacing this line. Um, 8,600 8, feet of this line uh, from Appalachian Court to uh, Hyde Road, I think. High Park Road, and these are the prices that we've got. This is a sort of a rough estimate to get uh, on the agenda, and hopefully we can get um, at least one more bid, if not two more bids, on these materials to get this. And you'll notice also too that we contracted part of a case board. Uh, on this in the Tokenock area that the city had attempted at one time and wasn't successful and we're going to try to do it with a directional bore machine and that's the contracted part of the 40 foot 10 inch case bore it is $5,600 and then the other is just material with the city installing the material from Appalachian Court to uh, Hyde Park and also, too, from uh, Old Highway 5 to where the city had presently laid some six-inch line on Old Talking Rock Road. Uh, Have you talked to the railroad about the board of the railroad already, getting that permit? Yeah, Lonnie's getting that straight now. I've done spoke with them about it. Uh, I've got to meet with them out there at the site. There'll be no hurry. <laughs> Just take that. Uh, David mentioned that we had this issue out there one day last week. Um, most of the day without water, likely it was one of those days where the temperature was not uh, real high, uh, but there is a uh, chicken uh, plant uh, at the end of, of the road. And if we lose that water, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and the demand in the area has gotten great enough now to work, and we can give the people fire protection also. I didn't get to quote if you got it on one of those things. Should have three sheets of the. Also, it shows you where the water lines are going and where the bore is. Did you get 2390? I don't think Jim got it. I got, I got all three. Everybody got all three? Yeah. Okay. So it shows you where each line's going um, Twin Mount Lake. Old Talking Rock Road, 2390 feet, a six inch pipe, and the one road over uh, at Old Highway 5. We don't have to do that board this year if we don't have the money. Um, that's the one board that I left out because of the cost of it. You're talking about right here? That's one. That you don't have to That would be a pretty neat one if you had it tied in even to right there, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it would be. Um, yeah, I mean, we may have the money, you know, to actually to do that. Yeah, it would be great if that six from up here was tied onto that. Um, but the one you know doing yours down here actually loops it. Is the reason I done it, you know, because it takes that to and brings it around the Ivy. What is it, Ivy Lane? I'm not sure. Ivy Green Lane at the end there. Is that right, on the Ivy Green? Right. Right. It loops those back together there too. So you would have the two each way. But yeah, that'd be, that one and that one both together would solve your problem, you get two beams coming. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, but this was, you know, what we got up and we checked with um, Lisa, and she said we had two projects, um, 108 area. Check out both 108 area. Uh, and Jim and Talk. I had uh, replacing the old Alaska Road water lines line and replacing Highway 108 to Refuge Road water line. Both we had budgeted for capital outlay for our infrastructure thirty thousand each. Taking that sixty thousand dollars and putting to this before, um, because this has caused us problems for years. Y'all had this on the budget for years, and we just haven't had to get to it, but. We'll get started on it immediately this year and get this put in. Um, it's, it's, it's something that really needs to be put for our present customers, not even consider the future. Mm -hmm. Customers that we already have uh, deserve better. So the request to council is going to be uh, uh, allowing us to, to move the budgeted money into this project. And we will finish getting quotes. Uh, and allow us to go with the lowest price uh, within budget of, of $60,000. Uh, this is important. We can lose service to an area that we we uh, can't lose service to. Yes. All right. Any other questions? <coughs> Thank you, Dave. Uh, Thank you. That one will be on the... Uh, Agenda. Uh, in your package, you've got a proposal from uh, Carl Vinson Institute to uh, manage the search for city manager, city manager position. Um, I think I mailed, I, I know I mailed it out to all of you before. Uh, there is an option to have them facilitate the interviews. Uh, that would be an additional $1,500 before the price of $9,487.50. They would manage uh, the uh, the uh, selection of uh, uh, city manager, they would advertise it, uh, do an evaluation of all applicants, provide the city with a list of that applicants, and uh, rate them as uh, uh, need to interview, uh, possible interview, and uh, no interest. It would be council's final option to accept their information. We could interview any of them that we wanted to, uh, or or none of them. But uh, I think it uh, is a good idea. They would say they suggest it could take three months to do it. Uh, any 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 ideas? Any comments? Fifteen hundred per day. Yes, per day. How many days do we have to stay? You know, I would uh, I would suggest that we uh, aim at having five candidates uh, for uh, initial interviews um, and. That could be done in, in one day. And I think any secondary interviews we could do without mm -hmm. or so we could manage that ourselves. Any questions, comments? I don't I don't have a copy of the I, I, I may be looking at the wrong place. Did you give me a copy of the uh, Proposal. Proposal. It's passed all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is free. Mm -hmm. That's for our progress. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Four 
you know, they going to interview us first? Yes, they will also interview uh, mayor and council, uh, getting an idea of what uh, your, your wishes are in a uh, city manager. I'm just looking for the, uh, no, there he is, $9,487.50. What is that for again? They would um, advertise the position. Uh, first, the first thing they would do is interview mayor and council to see what you're wanting in a uh, city manager. Then they would advertise the position, accept the applications, evaluate the applications, give a recommendation to council on ones to interview, uh, not interview, or potentially interview. I think there's three different uh, levels they, they consider. Uh, then it would be council's decision to accept that, interview the ones they uh, suggested, or add or subtract uh, anything uh, okay. to it. Right, see. And facilitation of candidates' interviews, 1,500 per day. How many days they anticipate they take? I would. That's what I would you just uh, ask. I, I would say you would target to have five interviews for the, the first interview. That could be done in one day. So if you decided to have them here, it would be another $1,500. Any secondary interviews, I think, could be handled in the house. So about $12,000. Yeah. yeah. And you had some guidelines, didn't you, as to what you expect them to, uh, description of a job, education requirements. Uh, they have that. We had a job description. They put the, uh, I, I think more information will come out of their coming here to interview mayor and council to determine what you will be looking for in a candidate. Along with, with the learning out. Yeah. All right. No other questions? When do you anticipate when would you anticipate to look? I think if this was approved for Monday's night, Monday night's meeting, we would sign the contract <laughs> and send it to them immediately. And the budget for this item? Uh, we're going to have to determine where the budget is on this. I have not talked to Lisa about that. It's not in the budget, Mayor. Not. Yeah. What about, uh, she was talking about the um, uh, but don't want the yeah. unrestricted don't come up here. Unrestricted. They're not. I don't know that they'll be that much unrestricted. We before Monday night, we will have a, a uh, idea of where the money can come from to present you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Lonnie, I want to talk a little bit about the paving projects. And I did send in a letter. I'm not sure if I copied that, but they are on record. We, uh, I guess, was in my city manager update. They they are aware that we're rebidding that payment. Okay. The reason for the rebidding is uh, we had several companies, uh, well, three immediate companies, that contacted me about the thickness of the asphalt and how much it can burn <coughs> above the gutter, curb and gutter now. And so I talked to Jim and the mayor and also uh, city attorney. And uh, due to that fact that the milling of the road was a big issue, uh, if we just went with the edge milling that was in the bid contract, uh, we would have ended up having a 
real high crown in the middle of the street that it just wouldn't have looked right, it wouldn't have worked right, and all, all kinds of problems. So there, uh, different companies have talked about the possibility of milling the whole road, milling uh, at least six to eight feet from the curb out to the toward the center of the road. Um, it's really uh, going to have to be determined. Uh, they have said that some of the milling on some of the secondary streets, especially uh, to get it an inch and a half below the curb, and uh, some of it could possibly need to go six or eight inches down. Um, so, you know, I have, I've been taking information that I've got and relaying it to uh, the city here. And so we decided to withdraw the contract, the bid contract. Uh, we sent them an email, Lisa did, I made phone calls to make sure they got it. The company seemed very appreciative that we were doing that. Uh, nobody complained about withdrawing it. Uh, I informed them that the streets would stay the same length, same width, everything stayed the same, but the new one would have uh, some stipulations about milling and, and what we wanted and expect. So I contacted the DOT today, uh, talked to one of their engineers that uh, and talked to them about how they decided about their depth and everything. And he said that the biggest thing was to go out and look at the curb and see what the height is, the average height, uh, look at our utilities like our valves, manholes, and see if we could determine how high that was around those utilities. Um, and then maybe set a limit so that everybody will be bidding on the same bid of say four inches or whatever it's there, four inches plus the inch and a half or three inches plus the inch and a half below the curb and then come back in and fill it back in to the inch and a half that we were initially talking about. So this was just something that I was going to bring back. I hadn't even talked to Jim and Mary and one about talking to the DOT today. This all happened after lunch. And, uh, so this is something that would, uh, I'd like information from the mayor and Jim as far as uh, how deep do we want to go. We do need to set a depth uh, to, to give the company's instructions as far as uh, you know, what we're going to do about the milling. So that's, that's the main reason we to pull the bid package before open date. Bottom line is we get a better better job when it is completed and uh, probably save money by not uh, uh, negotiating with the successful bidder uh, to do additional milling. Uh, keep it competitive. Morning, we well, we, we had to do some edge milling extra. We, uh, the city has not done any complete mill in the streets or anything like that. The, the state came through on 53 West Church Street on the way to Tate and they did some mill. But uh, the city, the streets we've done, we've just edge milled some and it, it didn't amount to that much. Um, so it's something we gotta, if we can get this settled and get it in next week's paper, then we should have an opening date and be ready to bring it before council at the next council meeting uh, a month from Monday. So uh, it's just some stuff that we need to uh, work out and make some decisions on the depth. And also had uh, was mentioned, you know, we've been putting a 45 day deadline. Well, due to traffic control and the milling and everything, it's going to take more time and maybe move the 45 to 60 days or something like that. Uh, that's a decision we have to make and then everything else will stay the same. I think we do have the additional days. It's reasonable. Lonnie, did you ask them for the, what they recommend as far as the depth? I did ask uh, the ones that I talked to and 
and they said that without coming up here and doing some getting some thickness and things like that that they really couldn't say. Uh, they were going to pay about an inch and a half, weren't they? they about an inch and a half, yes. So were they not mill an inch and a half? Well, they'd mill an inch and a half, but to bring it level with the curb, and it's higher than the curb now, some of the streets are. And so what what I was thinking is just no, going not, around. Not Main Street that's higher than the curb. Uh, Whitfield Street's higher than Whitfield the curb. is, and uh, let's see, I think there's one more that they named. But what I was thinking is take a tape measure, and go up there and measure how much higher it is and then add that to the inch and a half and then whenever we get done it'd be flush with the curb. If anybody's got any suggestions. Well Main, Main Street's going to be your biggest issue right. and it's all fresh, freshly paved new curb back when it was done. So that should be easy to figure. Right. Inch and a half down, bring it back an inch and a half and you got it. Right. The uh, Mark Whitfield, that's just going to be some serious grinding to get it back down to where it looks right. We, we paid that last time, City Cruise did, and, and we did not have the mill in place. We were just glad to get the potholes covered. So I'd look at that street, and what other street besides Whitfield? I'd have to look at my own house. Most of them are not curved. Were well, you going to do the all? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's curved, and I think it may be above in a, lot, in a few areas. So that's what I was thinking, is just check the ones that's above and measure how much above and add that to an inch and a half and put a limit on that so that be ballpark. everybody would be bidding on the same thing. And the product itself, are we going to be able to keep that? I'm putting, that I'm putting that in the bid package that we would furnish trucks to haul it and retain the byproducts of the mill. Okay. And a lot of that we would intend to use over on Appalachian Court. That's, that's Thanks. It's a good core, good, good, it's a good product, yeah. worth having. Okay. And, and what we didn't use, we go over to uh, Pioneer Road. The Sharp Shop. Over. All right, I think that's really just for information, but uh, uh, we'll then get that out to uh, Mayor and Council. Next one is very important. Got a proposal from Tension Heating and Air Conditioning to air condition the uh, city manager's uh, area. Um, the gas heat in there, uh, Denson came out and looked at it. Uh, Chief Roper uh, walked through and made a comment that it was leaking. Uh, my nose did not notice it, his did. Uh, we had did, did you didn't find my fingerprints, did you? <laughs> no, but I, I got Greg looking at that. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, it is within my spending limit that I will re I'm <coughs> requesting that uh, council allow me to uh, spend uh, $4,400, round numbers, on uh, too many split units of heat and cool the area. Do they look at ducking it over there? Yeah, can't do it. That's half our search fee, you know. <laughs> See, my comfort, my certainty, you know, both of them are fairly important. Uh, In your package, you've got a presentation. Uh, ben Turk seat sent me uh, on April 24th. Uh, it is a PowerPoint presentation that was made at GAWA <coughs> Spring Conference uh, by Jeff Jones of Clayton County Water Authority. Uh, that is for your education. You have to hopefully understand uh, uh, some of the things that were we've been talking about on water loss and such. The last item I've got on the agenda is uh, discussion, uh, any dis is there any discussion concerning the comprehensive plan? All comments that were received have been sent to uh, uh, 
Capital Street. RC. 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 It's not the RDC. Are, are there any, is there any <coughs> discussion? Okay. All right. That is my agenda. Uh, last items are uh, those of interest to uh, mayor and council. What discussion? If you will condense what you see important tonight that you went over, I, I've tried to put some agenda items next to your hot topic. If you'll bring that closer for me and give that to Lisa and I, I will. may have one item or two, I don't know. I, I will have a budget I thought I yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, there, there's going to be other items uh, that uh, certainly will do the uh, old business and new business. Uh, I'm not sure what might be sitting on the old business. <clears throat> if we're real careful, we might not break any records with time. I'll make no comment on that. <laughs> it depends. Anything else? Since our last meetings, I've been in uh, every <coughs> public restroom within 200 miles of here. Um, and um, I had not been in any moaning privies yet, but <coughs> based on the figures that we've been able to put together on public restrooms for the road property, uh, if they're freestanding, um, we need to keep, keep looking, um, ranging from 200 to $300 a square foot. And again, that's a contracted price, not an internal price. But um, um, I've done some designs on my own that could probably get it down to around 64 square feet. Um, <coughs> and um, um, You're talking about renovating the building or build another building? I'm talking about a separate little um, freestanding. I do know that that was a mention for the door swinging part. Um, some of the, I mean, these that we received from this architectural firm are way too fancy. Don't you? Yeah. Well, I agree. And that there are two or three privy ones. They're, they're spending a lot of money just the way they're treating the roofs and the uh, little front. It's interesting that that's the thing that <coughs> in Clayton County, too. Um, but you need about 64 square, square feet per. ADA, um, so just, I don't know internally what we could do, um, whether we want them permanent, as in brick, frame, um, I think that ultimately for that particular piece of property, <coughs> having a little bit better idea of what we'd be using it for would be nice, um, so that we could locate them where we never have to revise them. But, um, sure don't want to build them and then move them. Right. Or tear it down. I don't know if there's any money. I know there's some stuff on the comprehensive plan about developing that property and restroom. I think the total is 50000 I think a bathroom would eat that up pretty quickly for a standing one. <clears throat> the original plan, I thought, was when we were going to use the pro building to take down the structures that have been added over the years because it's not aesthetically pleasing. <clears throat> and we were going to go in and divide the inside of the building and basically working with uh, commercial interiors which is Ken Pent and Don Boggess and they're going to help us with some assistance as well as some guidelines basically uh, what I had in mind that they're, they're world famous for building Burger King bathrooms right. and so uh, well at least United uh, at least Southeastern United States are famous uh, that they have the materials, they build the materials right here, the heavy duty commercial grade. And but that seemed like it's gone by the board, but that was not going to cost the numbers that we're talking now. But do um, do they have to go over there and look at those buildings to do that specific? No, specific what we were going to do is go in and right. make sure the asbestos wasn't going to be an issue. We was going to cover up most of it. And we was going to drop the floors, tile the floors and use their materials for the partitions and et cetera and the, and the potties and et cetera. So, but uh, that was the thought then, it was moved forward. And, but, that, but it was going to be a lot less than, I think it's going to be affordable. Yeah. Uh, what we're talking about here is almost outside our yeah. possibilities. Well, some of the rest, you know, um, ball grounds are really quite simple. simple. 
Um, and uh, and they have them at the ball fields too. In our our city park, um, they're simple. I think you could probably aesthetically improve that same kind of idea without adding a tremendous amount of expense, depending on what we could do internally. Um, I don't know if we have brake license we can use or not. I know they've gotten really, really hard to come by, but, um, or whether we want to just do them tastefully done. In a, I don't want to use the word rustic, but at least mirroring our architecture or our downtown area. You can make them look somewhat period and do them pretty simple. Uh, can you could you try something like that? Sure. Can you fiddle with it a little bit? <coughs> Two, two stalls or three at the most. Yeah. Is there any interest in the possibility of a unisex? That's what I was thinking. Something, something just one, one for the kid. Just to get the babies, get the diaper change. I think it's a good idea. I think at least one of them yeah. could. No, I'm, I'm you talking I'm about just a single, single stall. Single uh, restaurant like in the middle. <clears throat> to figure out what the... There we put a question mark on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Uh, I think they call them... Family. Gender family, friendly. Gender friendly. And, well, family restrooms or companion restrooms. Or, I've, I've seen I've seen a couple of different things. Ladies, uh, man, you know, want to share a restroom? They have asked to at the house. So. All right, let me as long as there's a place to go. I'm going to get close. Just a family restaurant. Um, Jim, I'll be in the office in the morning if we can knock this out, I think. The agenda. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Think so. Are we done, pretty much? Anything else? Thank you. Thank you.